Let's not waste any time. To the left we have the Samsung S95D, to the right we have the Samsung S90D. Out of the gate, Samsung with the S95D promised a professional calibration Pantone validated colors. Basically, this is their version of a master calibrated TV like what Sony would offer. And yeah, as you can clearly see, their settings to the left, my settings to the right. Moral of the story, even when they promise you a calibration, it's going to look like trash. And I mean like royally look like trash. And if we were to do the comparison in this way, the Samsung S95D would have lost astronomically. It wouldn't have even been close. So if you want to see my settings, then make sure you join and grab my settings because that is the only way you're going to see the full potential of these TVs because professional calibrations do not do that. Now that out of the way, I want to go back a couple of frames here and then we're going to talk about what it looks like when you have the proper settings. So I've already done the work just so we can hit the ground running and I'm going to go ahead and back out of this as well. I'm already in movie mode here and I'm going to go into movie mode onto the S95D as well. And we're going to go here and bam, movie mode. Now, I want to talk about a couple of differences, okay? Out of the gate, the Samsung S90D is just brighter. There is no getting around that. There is no argument to be had there. It's very bright. Now, to give you an idea of how ridiculously bright the S90D is, I'll just go to standard mode and then I'll just max everything out, okay? We're at 38 on the brightness, let's max that out. And then we're gonna go down to, uh, let's see, peak brightness, which is already set to high. So as you can clearly see, it is an incredibly bright TV. Now granted, standard mode looks like crap and everything is way too cool and it needs a hell of a lot of work but you get the idea for the level of brightness that it has. Now I'll go to a different screen shot here so you can see what we're dealing with in terms of brightness. And again, it's just immensely bright. Again, no real way to get around that. Now, I'm gonna start with this image. We're gonna go back to movie mode, which is my calibrated setting for the Samsung S95D. Um, okay, so here's what I noticed. The Samsung S90D to the right is just sharper. There is no getting around it. The amount of contrast that you get is higher as well, and you see more of a 3D image on the S90D. It just happens that way. Also, you can notice that you have more rays of light that kicks up here. You have more, again, contrast, the difference between dark and light, which is what separates an image ultimately, giving you that 3D feel. That is what the Samsung S90D gives you. Also, you have better color. So you're gonna notice on average colors like purple looking way more accurate on the Samsung S90D. Now colors like yellow look way more accurate on the S95D. So you have to pick I guess which color you like more, I don't know. Neither are primary colors, but they are very important colors nonetheless. And I'd say purple is closer to a primary color, so you're probably going to run into some issues if you want to have the best representation of the color purple with again certain content pieces. Now, this is kind of where I fall in this whole thing, okay? I love the brightness of the Samsung S95D, but the matte finish screen is trash. I do not like it, I never will like it. It's, they should not have done it. I think it also is contributing to a lack of sharpness. It just gets blurry sometimes. Like the screen just looks way more blurry in comparison to the Samsung S90D. You will not be able to see this on YouTube, but I will go over what I see with my eyes here on my end, okay? So the S95D to the left is just not as tack sharp for literally everything that holds geometry. So we talk about the blouses, the cups of wine, the table, the blazers. I mean, everything isn't looking as tack sharp as it should. Now, granted, some people might try to poke holes in that by squinting their eyes and doing some sort of hocus pocus magic, but I'm here to tell you, I don't care what you do, the contrast is just greater on the Samsung S90D, which makes it feel like the actual flagship, where the 95 feels like the junior flagship. And to be honest, I did not expect this going into this review. I expected at least to see a massive difference in terms of what the S95 to the left could do versus the S90D to the right could do. Me personally, I'm team S90D all the way. I think it is the TV to get right now. It is the proper replacement for the S95B because of the amount of contrast it gives you. No, it is nowhere near as bright as the Samsung S95D. 
but it also doesn't have that crappy matte finish screen and it also is giving you more three-dimensional color. Now don't get me wrong, the S95D does a great job with color, it's just not as good as the 90D, again rocking my perceptual calibration standards. My settings that I put into this TV is what's helping it achieve that next level. It is not doing that out of the box as I've shown in the beginning of this video, which I can again illustrate at any point in time like now. I can just grab my remote, open up the settings. I'll actually go ahead and do this like this. Okay, and then we're gonna go filmic remote and we're just gonna go bam. And you can see it just, it, it's dead. It, it literally, it would lose. And I need you to hear this, okay? It would lose miserably if you rock the professional calibration, Pantone validated color crap that they promote on the, the advertisement, on the product description. It would lose. Because I promise you, if you look at the image to the right right now versus what you got out of the box, you would not be impressed. You would not keep this TV for the amount of money, keyword there, amount of money that they are charging. It is so absorbent to the point where it's just like there's no real point in paying that kind of money to get dead, lifeless, ugly colors. And I mean ugly. That is not what a parrot looks like. That is not reference accurate to anyone's standard of visual perception it just isn't maybe to what a computer software running 30 year old metrics on limited technology can do but it's showing it's clearly showing and i've been pointing this out example after example after example and it just looks bad now we're going to go back to my settings here okay we're going to open up the picture settings we're going to go back into movie mode go from lifeless dead ugly not real color to bam, now it can compete. So again, I told you the color yellow on the Samsung S95D to the left is better, and it is way better. This is in part due to the extra luminosity from the just significant level of brightness that it kicks off. However, the contrast is still lower. You can notice this in the things like the socks here. It just looks better on the Samsung S90D, and the overall three-dimensional draw just pulls you in more particularly shadows right so like how the dress has its ruffles you're going to notice that better on the samsung s95d or rather s90d than the s95d now again the s95d absolutely nails it with the overall brightness but it's almost like it's too bright like this year is exactly what i was worried about where all they really focused on was bright 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 but they didn't hone in on that purity that richness behind the color while being bright so you lose a lot of the the rich color like that that just there's no other word to say it rich color you look at the gloves you look at the jacket you look at the shade of purple you look at the shade of the umbrella it's richer on the samsung s90d no again it's not as bright but brightness is becoming a double-edged sword here where yeah it gives you a wow factor that maybe will make a couple people buy this but it's also hindering the performance of this screen to where it can't compete on the level that the S95 or the S90D is competing. The S90D just has so much more contrast in some examples, it just feels ridiculous. Now again, the brightness is nice and everything, but it is not the only story here. Okay, so here we are on the landing screen for Kingdom Hearts 3, and you can clearly see the color on the Samsung S90D to the right just looks richer again you can notice that there's just a more pure more premium shade of cyan than what we have over there all the colors in general just look generally better now in showcasing these two tvs i couldn't do it without showing you motion and gaming in particular so i had some requests to see what motion would look like so again i'll just go ahead and pan and I'm just going to throw this out there. The motion on the Samsung S90D is smoother than the Samsung S95D. I feel like this is because the Samsung S95D doesn't add the proper amount of motion blur and instead tries to make it like a super responsive screen. But all that really ends up doing is creating like this, I don't know, like it's not ghosting or anything, but it's just a jarring effect where there's a little bit more in the way of motion artifacts and jitters than what exists on the Samsung S. 90c which is just smooth cinematic panning this is just a little bit more jerky and very uncomfortable to look at don't know if you can actually see this or not but as i look at the strawberry i look at the land the scenery everything of this game it just has a certain look on the samsung s90 uh, d versus the s95d the s90d's approach is over brighten everything 
That's the simple answer. There's no real intelligent highlight mapping, highlight placement. It's just bright for the sake of being bright. Don't get me wrong. There are moments where highlights look good, but overall, in most of the examples that I've seen, it's just been overly bright where the S90D doesn't target such aggressive brightness and as a result is able to get more accurate, more realistic, more enjoyable highlights that I think a lot of people would appreciate. And that's the thing here too, is that when you have such a difference in picture quality as far as what one offers versus the other, I mean, I guess some people kind of fall into their particular camps of what they want. You're either going to want a lot of brightness or you're going to want a lot of accurate color and highlight mapping because that's really what it is it's the precision color mapping it's the precision highlight mapping that just is not happening like the way i can explain it is the image on the samsung s 95d is more like if you wanted like the world's brightest oled then fine go for it but the s 95d or the s 90d to the right is more if you wanted the most premium oled like the the clarity the purity like you are really like an actual like image purist that wanted things to look the way that they are supposed to and not overly done then this is the oled that you would be going with for sure because the samsung s 95 d just does not do that don't get me wrong i'm not saying it looks bad because the highlights are to die for they are beautiful at times like in certain examples here in kingdom hearts it does look good i'm just saying overall it is a bit overly done and that becomes a bit of a problem. Now, as you can clearly see, both do a good job of like these little tiny highlights, like the lights on the rails here. I mean, it, it just becomes a point of what you prefer, I suppose. If we look at the tiles, you can see what I'm talking about as far as the contrast. You notice that there's just a darker, richer color happening here, and that shade of blue is just a little bit more pale by comparison. This is the generality for the entire experience you will have on the Samsung S95D. Yes, it's brighter, but colors become pale as a result. It's almost like the brightness is diluting the color and you are just missing out on some very key things that you normally would have. All in all, if brightness is your thing, you are going to want to go with the Samsung S95D by far, period. It's the brightest OLED I personally believe ever made, and I think that's going to really grab a lot of people who have always wanted a really black OLED, because a bright OLED, because again, perfect black and all that stuff, but you also get the brightness that is definitely LED level. This is a first, and we have never seen that, which is wonderful. However, if you want that 3D look that the S95B is known for, you're going to go with the S90C or S90D rather, because the S90D to the right is just a 3D TV. And if you like that like sharp crystal look, like the only way I can explain it is it's really like so three dimensional that it becomes like you're looking through a TV instead of at it. Where again, the S95D does not do that. It gives you more examples of blurrier images, paler color. I mean like, let's pause here, okay? the grass for example you can see that the grass is clearly richer right here and over here it's just pale and this is something that i have noticed time and time again the color in the dress is way more rich on the samsung s90c than it, or s90d than it is on the s95d so these are the little examples and again you can replicate this with the samsung journey of color 4k demo on the 4k media demos you can look at this stuff yourself at timestamp 58 seconds okay it is there and you will see what i'm talking about the field of roses we pause here i'll walk you through what i saw there we'll just run it back a couple of frames let it progress forward and then we'll go again i'm i'm telling you guys like there there is no getting around it there is no like you know you pay more so you magically get more that's not how it works in the market right like now in this example the 3d nature of the S90D is insane. It's like that AI 4K upscaling chip that they have is just working way harder. And I feel like this is actually upscaling everything to 4K where this just looks like the native 1080p source or, you know, whatever it was shot on or whatever. I don't know. You get what I'm saying though. It doesn't look as good. It doesn't look like a pure, clean, rich, sharpened 3D, every little detail source. Where here, I see every little detail. I truly do. And I think that's something that a lot of people are going to get tired of. The dress is also bluer. The foliage in the back, the trees, they're all better. And then again, 
in every single example that I have looked at, this has been the thing that I have noticed. Like, there is just no getting around it. Yes, the S90C is brighter, but brighter isn't always better. Again, if we run back our scene here, we can kind of see what I'm talking about. Because the brightness comes as a double-edged sword. And some examples like now, see, here you clearly have all the details in her face. You see all the shadows, natural shadows that exist. Where Samsung is seemingly over-brightening everything in about this scene and you don't have any real natural shadows so I don't know any part of the real world that doesn't have natural shadows and if this is an AI based formula they need to rework it push out a patch and fix that because it's not supposed to be that way and the image is not supposed to be blurrier in comparison to this image that we have to the right on the Samsung S 90d it's just not supposed to be that way and we're we're running into this more and more and more and more and you can see it on commercials you can see it on pretty much any and everything that you could possibly look at and that's the point where i just kind of washed my hands of it i'm like listen the samsung s95d is great and all but for the amount of money that they're asking for it's just not worth it and honestly speaking that's maybe uncomfortable for people who already bought it and tuned in just to feel good about their tv as they wait for it to ship out i'm sorry but i'm not here to give lip service i'm here to tell you the damn truth and the truth is this tv is good it's great even but comparatively to their junior flagship model it does ultimately lose so the winner of this comparison is going to be the samsung s90d for the following reasons it has a more 3d way of presenting resolution images contrast all of that just better the colors are richer it is less expensive motion is smoother and you get every real notable feature that the samsung s95d offers but a little bit better and i just don't understand how that even happened and moreover the speakers on the samsung s90 uh, d are better than the speakers on the Samsung S95D where they sound a little bit tinnier and they don't have the same level of bass and it just isn't as nice at the same levels of volume. You'd really gotta crank the Samsung S95D to really hear that punch and I think that's a damn shame too. But ultimately speaking, both are great TVs. You do still win either way, it's just why pay more when this is literally the better TV for less? Now, after this review, you very likely might see a patch come out and absolutely nerf the hell out of this TV. But I'm here to tell you right now, as it sits, this is the better TV. And again, both TVs have been firmware updated. Now, I'm going to go ahead and show you that both TVs are on their current firmware and that there are absolutely no tricks whatsoever being played. So I'm going to open up the settings menu for both TVs, okay? And then we're going to go into all of our settings. We're going to go all the way down to the bottom to support. And we're going to go to firmware. And right now I'm rocking 1059 on both of these televisions. So, I mean, really, that's all we can really do. And we can go to the about section so you guys can see what these TVs are. You can clearly see in the model number I have the QN. 55 s 95 d and then there's a bunch of letters after that and then on to the right we have the qn s 90 d 65 and then you can see again all that various stuff there as well but my point with all of this is to just show you like you are not getting what you pay for when you pay the extra money all you are getting is brightness and that might wow some people but that does not impress me i have seen bright tvs before and way brighter than this so the reality is you've really got to be very picky i mean i don't know i'll run this back hopefully you guys can see what i'm talking about here like when they got to that example with the rose petals and the ladies just land there like this i mean come on i don't know what youtube's gonna show you okay but what i'm looking at is very clear Yes, Samsung on the S95D to the left is brighter, but again, that richness and that 3D stuff that's happening on the S90D, that extra contrast between the petals, isolating every color perfectly, where this is more flat, it's more of a two-dimensional image, that's not going to sell it to me. And I think, ultimately speaking, if you had to make a jump in either direction, go with the S90D. Save the money. Don't waste the extra money thinking that you're getting something better. And the matte finish screen is just that. It's a matte finish screen. It's nothing fancy. They've been doing it on monitors for years. And while, yes, it diffuses light, that's kind of like a no shit moment, right? If you have something that's matte finished, it's not going to gather light as 
well as a reflective surface, something that's glossy. It's kind of common sense, right? So that didn't impress me. I was more interested in the performance. And if we strictly talk performance, yes, brightness goes to the Samsung S95D every day of the week, but every other metric that matters, it loses. And therefore, the Samsung S90D is the winner here. But let me know what you guys thought about this comparison in the comments down below. Thanks for watching the number one brand in honesty. And until the next video, I'll see you guys later.